Hello and welcome back to another episode of the UIM Progress series. In the last episode, we finished our little Tempros journey that we were on. Got ourselves some nice juicy loot. This episode, we're going to start off just by opening the caskets that we got, using up anything inside of those. They should give us a few clues. I'm hoping for maybe about four or five, but better than we would have had. So we're going to do those like the one we're doing in the background. Once we are done with that, we have a lot of questing to do. Uh, I accidentally opened this casket here instead of opening another one and get some adamant. With this adamant, I've been thinking that every time we get a clue that we can build a stash unit for, it's probably better to just build them so that when we go on a clue, a clue grind later on, it's already done and ready. So here's us filling in the medium one from the north of the Shazian fight pit. It's just full Adi armor. If we have a do wipe, I guess we could use that, but we've got much better storables as we could just use anyway. And let's crack this easy one open for a unique at least. So it's always good. We can style that. I don't think we'll ever use it, but we may as well chuck it in the house. No point not doing. Let's go and build this medium stash unit or an easy stash unit. While we're here, we've got both pieces of a crystal key. Uh, I do believe it's a task to open it. So we'll crack this open for our dragon stone. Ooh, we might keep hold of that iron ore. We do have a smithing grind later on, so we'll keep hold of that and stick it in the looting bag. So just using up some of the bars we got, uh, we're going to make them into tiaras. Uh, coming in with 40 crafting, get a little bit higher. We'll also have a 61 crafting grind to come up shortly once we get out over all of our quests here. Uh, but we'll use these up. We'll see how far we get along with them. Uh, I might just end up piling them and selling them to the general store. Probably won't get too much GP for them. Ended up alking them uh, while we can buy our Natrians. Got ourselves 61 magic. And then we came over and did some wood cutting here at the teak trees. Already had quite high wood cutting anyway from winter top, but here is 60 coming in, which is yew trees. We'll get to 70 eventually for Song of the Elves, but this will do for now. Got a series of the most boring uh, quests coming up. We've got a forgettable tale of a drunken dwarf, which you'd have to wait for like 15, 20 minutes, like four different times through this entire quest. Uh, but it gets you such a nice little head start on farming that you really can't say no. Uh, after this, we do have to go and do Garden of Tranquility as well, which is pretty much the same thing all over again, just in a different location. Do gotta give this quest props where it is due though. This is one of the best cutscenes, I think, in the quests. Just those two guards worrying about being killed every 30 seconds while I'm in the background just robbing. But then to contrast that, what are the worst cutscenes in the game? This quest line is... It's dead, dead short when you actually get to it. The worst part about getting it is actually getting the two sets of ham robes. Apart from that, the quests themselves don't take long at all. Coming in as promised in the last episode, I did build another portal room and put the RD teleport in here. Uh, left one clear for when we get close to 69 magic and we can put the current castle teleport in. Uh, that'll be a good one for getting around, but what we've got now should pretty much get us all the way around. As soon as we can hit 69, uh, we should be set until we can get ourselves a jewelry box later on down the line so just going to use up all the fish that we got from temporos hopefully from what it looks like it should get us just below 70 cooking so we might need to do a little bit extra for the recipe for disaster requirement uh, i think I don't know if the calculator on rune light takes into account burnt fish if it does then we might have enough uh, but we're going to use all these up. We might leave the lobsters or something. Just something we know we can guarantee and cook. Uh, just as a little stack of usable food later on for when we start thieving. And we instead of having to thieve cakes every 10 seconds, you know, we, we might end up uh, just doing this and cooking some lobsters down the line. Getting a little bit of extra XP in. And here we are finishing off Merlin's Crystal, another quick and easy quest. 
just run around the game a little bit. Can't really say no. And now we've come over and finished off Creature of Fenkenstrain. Straight into flinching in the Holy Grail quest. I know it seems a bit disjointed to do the both in that order, but it is what it is. What are you going to do about it? So we finished this. It turns out it's not that bad. You don't have to actually wait for the HP to go down. You step out of its aggro range after one tile, so it's a lot faster than it used to be. But what isn't fast is the Garden of Tranquility quest, as I said before. Uh, we did finish it off. It was a little bit of waiting, and I just ended up just sitting here and waiting for it to grow. I'd done a lot of waiting around that day, so I just used the time to get some stuff done. This quest got us to 32 farming, which is just two levels away from being able to start Tithe Farm. It's the morning after now. Uh, we just AFK'd a little bit of cooking uh, last night after we finished questing. Uh, hopefully, in the next couple of clicks, this will actually be 70 cooking coming in. So it looks like we did end up having more than enough fish to get to 70. Uh, so we're going to keep these lobsters and use it as our food source for thieving down the line. So we'll just stick it in the looting bag for now and carry on questing. Another full day of questing ahead of us. And we're kicking it off with Holy Grail finished. Look at the state of the XP you get from this. 11k prayer and 15k defense is just absolutely daft. Uh, and that actually does bring us up over the 1.1k total. Uh, we don't get a notification or a broadcast or anything because uh, we went past the mark. But yeah, let's crack on. Let's carry on. Another slice of ham. Uh, the last one we can do in this quest line. Nice little bit of mining and more prayer XP. Obviously, the prayer doesn't mean as much. Now we've already used up our bones from the dragon implants last episode, episode before. Who knows? But we're going to start the Demon Slayer quest. Should be relatively easy with our stats now. We should pretty much one hit it. But first we had a 40 minute flinching session uh, with this demon. <sighs> Even with a rune sword. Oh, Adi sword, I don't remember what I brought at this point. It just takes so long. So, so long. You just try and you try and you try and the people get in the way. I just sat there, and I think inside of this, I actually did do the last hit here without the arc light, so it healed. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of a pain in the ass, but the state of the uh, the range XP you get afterwards is juicy. So, let's get this. Let's get our 27, 28 range. What do we end up with here? 28 range, so straight away, bone crossbows. Normally, I think it leaves you at 27, so that's buzzing another kind of flinchy ish quest but this one obviously is with the mage spells is going to be horror from the deep uh, it's needed for recipe for disaster and needed for god books and all sorts of stuff uh but not really an issue when you just flinch it around the rock and we had protection prayers anyway in case we messed up so a nice little bit of xp from that gets us up to 32 range 44 strength nice so the recorder was pretty much half on the screen for the start of this quest which is why you won't see it um but this is the completion of making history which was just go and dig about in a couple of places nice and easy i'm pretty sure this gives us a little bit of kudos in the varok museum uh we should be pretty close or oh, we should be able to get another lamp soon from one of these quests coming up And we quickly made friends with someone in our clan chat and got Shield of Arav done. Uh, you know if you know. It's difficult to get partners for these quests, but thankfully, uh, the clan chat, he, you can join the clan chat, but shout out to Makuni from my CC. Uh, so we bought ourselves some range training gear after that, just so that we can now that we've unlocked the bone crossbow, we'll be AFK in range. Uh, just in our downtime. Uh, I'll be going to my favorite spot on Fossil Island, which is just down here. These two ammonite crabs on the tile that I've marked there now. Feel free to go there because I'm done with it now. Uh, and we'll just be AFK in these. So obviously we're only like 28, 30, whatever range at the minute. Uh, and we've bought enough to go all the way 
almost to 70 range now it's probably not efficient but it's a lot of afk downtime in the evenings or afk while i'm working or anything like that so it you may as well just get it done now because it'll help us out down the line for a lot a lot of quests it's very easy just to get a bow and some arrows more than it is to go and get a dsim for example or go and get back the iban staff should we need it so it'll be very useful just to get these stats up now uh, it costs pretty much nothing. I think it costs about 50k for 10k arrows or something stupid like that. So very, very cheap, very easy way of doing it. We'll just get up to the level to where our green dehyde. And then when it comes to it, uh, I'm pretty sure we can get some red spiky vamps from an implant. Don't ask me which one. Uh, and we can get some blue chaps from an eclectic implant. So we can actually make a few upgrades there got ourselves an easy clue we got quite a few from afk and ammonite crabs and got ourselves an ancient blessing blessings are really really good because you can store them just individually on their own so we can always store it and get it back obviously you know down the line we can just get ourselves the current blessing uh but you know for now it's nice to have i'll take as many uniques as we can get at this point so here's the Evil Dave sub quest for Recipe for Disaster. Again, us the ability to plus five boost with stews and a little bit of XP. And here we are coming in with 40 range from AFK. In. Means we can put our green dehyde on and look pretty fly. And just coming in, polishing off the Lumbridge Guide section. Another little bit of cooking, some magic XP. But more importantly, we get out a gloves upgrade. And back to ranging doesn't feel like two minutes since we last done obviously this was all over the course of many hours chucking in a couple of hours here and there but that is 50 ranged uh which i do believe is the level we need for blue dehyde uh yeah blue dehyde and the others accumulator so we'll go and get the upgraded avers uh and yeah, there's not many upgrades until 70. We can't really get red dehyde from anywhere apart from them vamps I was talking about before. Coming back for the giant dwarf quest to our old nemesis. The reason we lost our purple graceful, it definitely was not my fault. It's all Thurgo's fault for being out here in, in the sticks. Not my fault, definitely not. So anyway, we're here for the giant dwarf. And now we're here for the giant dwarf. And we're here to solve a murder. And then we're here to slay a demon. Yeah, woohoo! Yeah! <coughs> Congratulations on 99 crafting, lad. Well done, Grats. Good job, mate. Anyway, after our little stop at a party there, this clip is actually from before. I'm not sure why it's here, but we finished Animal Magnetism. Came over. Finished off Queen of Thieves. Nice, all right, easy. And if anyone catches me doing this again and destroying my looting bag in the wilderness instead of just dying, please come and pick this stuff up. I, I don't deserve it. Came to try our luck on getting a range upgrade, got it on the first one, and then came over and finished off the wanted quest. Nice little 5k Slayer XP. Big old chompy bird hunting. And here's that second range upgrade. We death piled again to complete Enlightened Journey on Entrana. Annoying quest because you have to wait for the branches to grow on the willow tree. But here it is, finished off nice and easy. Wow! trying to pick her up and saying, girl, you're thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. Couple of nice levels coming in here. Just got 50 hit points from our AFK range training and there's 60 range. So we're getting up there now so we can put on our red spiky van braces uh, and we're gonna keep going. We should have enough bolts left for 70 going off what we're on now. So yeah, pretty good. Pulled some Bandos Rob legs from an easy clue. Another nice god item to store in the house. Unfortunately, we won't be able to get this one back out without the full set, which is likely never going to happen. Really weird place to get a construction level, but there's 54 construction from building the stash unit for this easy clue. And from the casket, 
we get an ancient page and a steel phalaum tea. No, iron phalaum tea. Nice. Another easy clue from the Ammonite Crabs for. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh. Holy blessing's quite nice. Again, another blessing and a sour item this time. Juicy. Come over to catch some trouts for the death plateau quest. This quest for a UIM is quite annoying as you have to bring 10 trout or 10 cooked trout and 10 bread to the guy along with like having steel bar in your inventory and climbing boots and GP and it's just very, very tight for inventory space. Uh, but while we've been fishing and while we've been hanging around, we've made ourselves a little list of things we're going to crack on with. But I thought instead of getting on with most of them, what we'll do is we'll just knock out Death Plateau real quick, get it out of the middle, and so that when we come to do all this next time, it'll flow a little bit nicer than this episode has. I mean, look at this inventory. We've already had to drop two bread because we couldn't fit everything in. Uh, so one of these people around here do pick up our bread that we left on the floor, so we do have to go back to Adi and grab some more before coming back. Well, hopefully we can clear up an inventory space or two here. Yeah, there's two spaces. So that'll leave us with the two spaces that we need for the bread. And yeah, then we can finish off the quest. And there is Death Plateau finished off. We're going to go straight into Troll Stronghold. Going to treat you. Going to do one more quest this episode. Get Troll Stronghold done. Uh, we might need to go and buy some runes. But we're going to try it with this bone crossbow. See if we can kill... Dad with the rune cross, uh, bone crossbow even. It should be okay. I don't imagine it being too bad. Or maybe it will be. Nah, in all honesty, as this is a safe spotable boss, you know, you just sit there and just wait. So, not really an issue at all killing this with a bone crossbow. Uh, did just flick eagle eye throughout it, but... You know, sick kid, good fight. Round two, fight. And another easy part of the quest. Easy. With that done, we're going to make our way back over to Dunstan. Just to finish off this quest. Now, we've done an absolute crap ton of questing this episode. And it's been all over the place, the clips... They've just been so unorganized, but it is what it is. Next episode should be have a lot more structure to it, at least. Uh, if you got this far, thank you so, so much for watching. Stick around for a little sneak preview of what we'll be up to next time. Ignore the bit that flashes up in the screen in like three seconds. Uh, but yeah, thank you again so, so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. See you in the next one. Bye.